here we want to prove that um, budget sets are compact, which is something we probably use all the time when we solve uh, maximization problems or utility max problems. But, you know, you may be asked to actually prove it, and um, it's good to know how to do it. I'm sure there's other ways to do this, but um, here's one way to do it. So, yeah, so we want to solve the maximization, pro the utility maximization problem. Um, subject to the budget constraint. So usually we're going to invoke the extreme value theorem, which I proved um, in another video, which I'll link. Um, sometimes it's called the Weierstrass theorem, but there's also other Weierstrass theorems, so I think uh, extreme value is better. Um, so we know that our utility function that we're working with is usually continuous, so if the function's continuous over a compact set, then we know that it attains its maximum. And then from there, we can use first order conditions or um, other conditions to find to find what the maximum is. So it's good to know how to show that the budget set is compact. So the Walrassian budget set, this is uh, the notation from MWG, the budget set for a given P and W, where that's prices of price vector and wealth, is all X's in um, the non-negative reals in the elf dimension, we have L goods such that the price of that bundle is less than our wealth. So it's in two dimensions, it's all points up to and including this line in the positive or the non-negative orthon. So hopefully we can kind of see that this looks like it's compact, right? It seems like it's bounded um, by this line or, you know, Every x, every x1 is bounded by w over p1, and every y1 is bounded by this, w over p2. So hopefully that seems like it's bounded. And is it also closed? Well, there's no holes that we see anywhere. So it seems like it would contain its limit points. So at least in two dimensions, it looks like it, it's compact. But we need to know that for, you know, when l is greater than 2. So first we want to show that it's closed. And um, any set is closed if it contains its limit points. So formally that is that if we have a sequence that's in uh, a set B and it converges to a point X, then that limit point X is also in the set B. Uh, the way I'm going to prove it, we first need to prove a little lemma about limits. So what we want to show is that uh, basically that the, taking the limit of both sides of an inequality is going to preserve the inequality. So if xn is less than yn for all n, then the limit of xn is going to be less than or equal to the, um, the limit of yn. And hopefully this makes sense. You know, If you have a big list of numbers and every one of those numbers is smaller than a different list, or the corresponding elements of a different list, then the limit is going to be smaller. It's not going to magically jump above the elements of the other list or elements of the sequence. So the proof, real quick, will let x and y be the limits of each of these sequences and let epsilon be given. And just by applying the definition of limits, this means there exists some big N1, big enough so that when the index is greater than N1, we have this. And this is just expanding um, the absolute value version of the limits, where it's Xn minus the limit X is less than or equal to epsilon over 2. And we have the same thing when for Y. And when we put these inequalities together, we, along with the hypothesis, we can write them out like this, and this just gives us this inequality down here that says all you're doing is adding the epsilon from here to here. So this says that x is less than or equal to y plus epsilon, and why does this tell us that x is less than y, or less than or equal to, sorry? It's because this applies for any given epsilon. So if you say, oh, no, 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 that epsilon doesn't work, this x is actually bigger than y, you could always find an epsilon that's smaller such that 
that's not going to work. So this is a way to show that x is less than or equal to y. So when we want to show that the budget set's closed, we're going to use that result. But first, you want to choose an arbitrary convergence sequence in, in the budget set. So we have a sequence xn. This is, you know, points in, or they're bundles in the budget set. And the sequence converges. Remember that, sorry, it's a little confusing with a subscript. This is not specific. Uh, goods. This is a sequence of bundles of goods. So the sequence of bundles of goods converges to a single bundle, x. Now, because each of these bundles is in the budget set, we have this holding because this is what it means to be in the budget set. So this is true for every bundle. Now, we can use our previous result and, you know, you could mumble about the limit laws here if you wanted to, um, that we could take the limit of both sides. And this is just the limit of a constant, which is going to equal the constant. And this is the limit of a constant, a positive constant in this, in this point, uh, cross product with, or dot product, sorry with our bundles. So this limit is going to pass through. We already confirmed that this this limit exists up here. So that means that we have that for any arbitrary convergence sequence that the limit is going to be in our budget set. Because when we pass the limit through we get this which means that our limit x is in the budget set. So that yeah like I said any any sequence that we take converges to a limit that's also in the set. So the set is closed. Now we want to prove that it's bounded. And um, so here we're using the proper subscripting here, where that for our budget set, the set is made up of these vectors x that are L-dimensional, which is just a list of, you know, the goods that we're buying. And these are... Uh, non-negative. So to show that it's bounded, we want to find some m such that we'll use the Euclidean norm, such that the Euclidean norm, which is going to give us a, it's going to give us a number, is going to be less than or equal to this m. So we can think about how we're going to find that, and we can go look at our graph. If we were just trying to find it for two dimensions, we see that, like we said earlier, the x1 values are bounded by w over p1. And the x2 values are bounded by w over p2. So the idea is that we don't, we want, for any kind of ordered pair we're going to take here, we want both components to be bounded by the same number. So we want to take the smallest p-value so we can get the biggest uh, ratio here, right? In this case, it looks like this is bigger, which would mean that p, p2 is less than p1, right? We make the denominator smaller to make the whole thing bigger. So that's what we're going to do for this, yeah. So we want the biggest wealth price ratio we can, so we choose the smallest price. That's what we just went over. So we let rho equal the minimum price. And we know this is going to be positive because it's a condition that um, the prices are strictly positive. So then for all x in our budget set, this, this uh, inequality holds. And then all we're doing is just rewriting what this means. Sorry, there's supposed to be a dot there. I guess the dot went in the wrong place. Um, and then because rho is the minimum, you know that this is going to be greater than or equal to rho times x sub l. And because it's a constant, we just pull it outside. And again, we, again, we know that rho is non-zero, so we can divide it across, and that gives us this inequality. Now, what is this? This actually gives us information about the maximum size of each x l. Because this is a sum of positive, or at least non-negative, numbers, we know that at most, the biggest XL 
could be w over rho. So we're going to use that in a minute. Remember, if you're adding up non-negative terms, the biggest term here, assuming every other one is 0, the biggest it could ever be is w over rho. So here again is the definition of uh, the set being bounded. So we have to show that the Euclidean norm is going to be less than m. So we're still trying to find this m. And from the last inequality, like when I mentioned, we know that for all l, x sub l is less than w over rho. And these are both positive because wealth is strictly positive too. So that means when we square both sides, we're going to preserve the inequality. So then when we take the Euclidean norm of this, the square root function isn't going to change the ordinal properties of this inequality, so that'll hold. The square root of all these terms, squared, is going to equal the norm, and it's going to be less than or equal to the square root of all of these w's over, over, sorry, this is supposed to be rho. I forgot to write rho here for all these. Uh, w over rho squared. And these are all givens. So we let this equal our m, and that proves that the budget set is bounded. So we've proved that the budget set is closed and bounded, which means it's compact, which means that uh, the utility function attains its maximum on the compact set. So that's it.